Hi, everyone. Welcome to Waste 360's Nothing Wasted podcast. On every episode, we invite the most interesting people in waste, recycling, and organics to sit down with us and chat candidly about their thoughts, their work, this unique industry, and so much more. So thanks for listening and enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. This is Liz Bothwell from Waste 360 with Ellen Jakowski, Global Head of Sustainability Strategy and Innovation at HP. Ellen drives HP sustainable impact strategy and programs that focus on the planet, the people, and the communities that HP serves. Welcome, Ellen, and thanks for being on the show today. Hi, Liz. Thanks so much for having me. So would love to hear a little bit more about your background and how you've made your way to HP focusing on sustainability. Sure. So ever since I was young, um, I always managed to find jobs that were linked to companies with fairly deep purpose. Um, For example, in high school, I worked at Ben & Jerry's, Uh, Ben & Jerry being one of the uh, kind of key founders of a company that had really strong purpose and direct connection to social impact. Um, And uh, ever since then, I've just always been drawn to choose employers that were really focused on some sort of social or environmental mission. Um, And uh, at one point I was a management consultant and HP was one of our clients. And I was just so impressed with the HP way and a lot of the culture um, that uh, HP is famously known for. And when the opportunity came up to come be a part of the sustainability movement at HP, uh, I definitely wanted in and that's how I ended up uh, in this role. Oh, that's great. And I'd love to hear uh, that you've always been attracted to companies with purpose. That's amazing. So please tell me more about HP's Elite Dragonfly, the world's first notebook made with ocean-bound plastics. We could not be prouder of this product. Um, HP's been on a mission for quite some time to continue to increase the sustainability benefits of every single product that we make and put out on the market. And the Dragonfly is another step in our mission to create the world's most sustainable products. Um, So the Dragonfly, as you mentioned, is the world's first notebook that contains ocean-bound plastic. It's the third product that we've launched that uses this type of material. The first was HP ink cartridges back in 2017. And then earlier this year, we launched the HP Elite Display Monitor that uses ocean-bound plastic. And then now, finally, we've innovated a way to include this material in the HP Elite Dragonfly. Uh, Not only does it have ocean-bound plastic in part of the product, uh, but there are other sustainability elements built in, starting with the packaging itself. Um, The packaging is 100% sustainably sourced. It has 35% recycled cardboard. We've really tried to think very consciously about every element of this product Um, and use it as an innovation uh, inspiration for some of our other products that you're going to see coming from us. Um, So the packaging has elements, uh, other aspects of the product itself. So for example, the screen uh, bezel is made of 75% recycled plastic. We're really on a mission to start replacing all of our virgin materials with recycled content. And the Dragonfly is just another great example of the innovation and progress uh, on this mission. Oh, that's fantastic. And I understand most of the material used in this model came from your recycling model in Haiti and what what you're doing there. Could you describe that recycling model and that localized effort? Because it's pretty extraordinary. Sure. And to be clear, the amount of that Haiti uh, ocean-bound recycled plastic in Dragonfly, it is just a small portion. Um, but it took a lot of innovation to figure out how to use it um, in this product PCs are pretty complex. There's a lot of heating and cooling that goes on. Um, So we've started with a small amount. And as we continue to innovate, you're going to see more from us. But yeah, so Haiti, um, what are we doing there? Uh, This really came from an idea that had begun over 15 years ago in our ink cartridges. Uh, HP's ink cartridges are one of the leading closed-loop recycling products out on the market. We've used Uh, We use more than a million PET bottles. Those are like plastic uh, beverage bottles that you might see, uh, plastic water bottles or uh, soda bottles. 
uh, we, we recycle those bottles and use that plastic in our ink cartridges um, to the tune of over a million of those bottles a day. So when we were wow. thinking about that type of volume, which is already pretty significant, uh, we started thinking about how could we have more impact? How could our procurement strategy around where we're sourcing those recycled bottles um, help, uh, help in, a, in a broader way? And so that's when we were introduced to a recycler in Haiti. Uh, and Haiti, obviously, is the, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. They have a lot of challenges. Uh, they do not have uh, municipal garbage collection across the island. So a lot of the garbage, including those PET bottles, end up on the ground, not ever being collected, and being an island nation so close to the ocean, when it rains and when the wind blows, all of that uh, garbage flows into canals and out into the ocean. And it's a, a major contributor of the ocean plastic pollution problem that the world struggles with today. So it was an opportunity for us to think about what if we started sourcing those PET bottles from Haiti, uh, created a market for that plastic, so that instead of being seen as waste, those plastic bottles were seen as a job, as an income opportunity. And could, in addition to helping stop the ocean bound plastic, pro or the ocean plastic problem, could also create, um, create jobs and help the economy. So that's uh, what we started to do with our ink cartridges. And through that process, we've been able to innovate, you know, now three products, including the Dragonfly, using that material. Oh, that's fantastic. And then can you talk about the process of turning the ocean-bound plastic into material that can be used in your products? It begins with collection. So we work with an informal group of uh, plastic collectors down in Haiti. And to date, because we've been able to use over 35 million bottles of this PET plastic, we've been able to create over 1,000 income opportunities. So these collectors uh, collect this this. Uh, plastic for us. It then is sent to a recycler in Haiti who shreds the plastic uh, and ensuring that it's sorted correctly so that we have as little contamination as possible. Then we wash it. Uh, this type of plastic is much dirtier than the type we used to buy before just off of the North American plastic market because it's been sitting outside. It's been in a canal, uh, it's been collecting dirt from the outdoor elements. So we need to treat it in a different manner than we would uh, some other types of plastic that we would source. So it goes through an extra washing step, and then we pelletize it into 100% ocean-bound plastic pellets. And then depending on its use, so whether we're putting it in ink cartridges or in the display monitor or now in the dragonfly, we compound it with other recycled uh, materials, typically recycled computer parts, or for example, with our ink cartridges, our recycled ink cartridge plastics. Uh, and then also mix it with a little bit of virgin plastic to have the appropriate strength for the performance that it's going to need. Um, and then we turn it into the part that we're going to make, whether it's the ink cartridge itself or the speaker that goes in the Dragonfly uh, or the parts that go in the Elite Display Monitor. Wow. Okay. Quite a process. That's amazing. Indeed. So I spoke with Do Knives from Lonely Well, and she said that um, she was very excited about what you guys are doing. And she said that HP has developed a way to integrate ocean-bound PET plastics into a compound that resembles ABS plastic, kind of what you're referring to. And that the real sustainability innovation is that you guys are a game changer. You've really changed the game in terms of product design and material engineering, and that is going to have implications for many other manufacturers. Do you see that happening yet? And was that part of your initial goal? Or is this a wonderful side benefit that you really are changing the marketplace? Well, when we thought about this project, you know, from the beginning, it was, as we were considering going down into Haiti, which is an incredibly difficult place to work, right? It, it doesn't have a lot of the capabilities that um, some of the other locations where our supply chain has been, you know, evolving and very established and stable for many years. So, there was a lot of risk in, in making this decision. Um, but the, the key for us was, can we create a stable market for this material, not just for us, but for other companies as well? We make, you know, black products for the most part. Our plastic that we use is black. Um, the ink cartridge plastic is black. The speaker um, that we create for the Dragonfly is black. The parts for the Elite Display Monitor uh, are black. And that means we can use these dark colors of plastic that 
uh, are consumed in Haiti. A lot of the energy drinks down there are gray or red or brown. Other companies typically create products out of recycled content that need to be clear or lighter colors. Um, so, so for us, we've created a lot of demand for these dark colors, but there's a question of who uses the clear and the light colors down in Haiti, uh, because at this point, you know, we don't have a need for that. So for us to be able to create new materials that we can um, show as models for others to use, that means other companies would be interested in coming down and purchasing the clear and, the, and these other colors and helping with the, the combined mission of creating a stable uh, economic market for recycled plastic and have a bigger impact on the waste cleanup and job creation. So so long answer to yes, um, the idea is to create new materials and to create a stable supply chain so that other companies can leverage it from Haiti directly as well as copy it. Um, as, as part of joining Next Wave Plastics, we were intent on sharing what we've learned in Haiti and how we've been able to set up this stable supply chain and scale it so that others could replicate it in Indonesia or India or other island nations where um, they also have a tremendous problem with, with plastic pollution. Right, that's true. Do you see that as HP's role in Next Wave Plastics? Could you talk more about ne what Next Wave is and your role there, how you see it? Next Wave is a consortium of companies, uh, HP, IKEA, uh, Trek Bicycles, um, uh, including some of our competitors like Dell. And the mission is to create uh, supply chains that can support the production of ocean-bound plastic and products. So by us deciding to join, you know, we've gotten to a point with our ocean-bound plastic supply chain where we felt we had lessons to share. So it was a great time for us to become a part of this organization and, and share the lessons that we've learned. So again, the others could leverage it, um, copy it and replicate it. And similarly, we're learning from the other companies in Next Wave uh, about the challenges that they've faced, how they've been able to overcome them. And we're sharing those learnings with our supply chain so that we can become stronger too. Oh, that's great. Well, we can't wait to watch and see what else comes out of that because it's quite an initiative. And so you mentioned some really big numbers um, where you've sourced uh, so many pounds of uh, plastic bottles um, from Haiti for your products. Do you see that number growing exponentially in the future as your goals change for how much of recycled content you want to use in your products? HP has set a goal to use 30% recycled plastic in our personal systems products, so all our PCs, our workstations, our gaming equipment, um, as well as across our print portfolio. So in all of our printers, our office printers, our home printers, our industrial printers. So this is an aggressive, difficult goal. 30% recycled plastic across all of our products by 2025. Um, and today we're at 7%. So we have a long way to go. We have a lot of innovation, a lot of changes we need to make. Um, and we're, we're ready for the challenge. So, uh, so in terms of scaling, uh, we're looking to scale all uses of recycled plastic um, across our products. But for ocean-bound plastic in particular, we also have um, some challenges ahead and some strong objectives in terms of what we're thinking in terms of growth. Um, we've, we've recently committed to investing in a $2 million washing line and bringing that down to Haiti to help uh, scale what we're doing. So it's being built right now in Germany, and in a few months, it'll be ready to be shipped and installed down there. We're, we're so excited about this. This is something completely different um, for HP. We've never made an investment like this at the very first mile of our supply chain. Um, companies like ours typically don't do that. But as we were looking at you know, the global challenges that the world is facing and the ocean plastic pollution problem and how successful we've been able to be so far, which has uh, at times you know, surprised ourselves, um, this just seems like the right investment to be making. The world needs more recycling infrastructure everywhere, wherever there's waste, whether that's in the United States or um, in places like Haiti or, or really anywhere in the world. Um, so we're doing something different and we're bringing this uh, washing line down there and we anticipate that we'll be able to increase the jobs 
uh, by adding another thousand income opportunities, uh, as well as increase the volume of plastic that's available to us and other companies who'd be interested in sourcing from Haiti. Wow, that's amazing. When do you think that'll be operational? Well, um, we're building a new building to house the washing line because uh, Haiti is prone to earthquakes and hurricanes and other things. Uh, so that was a, a new decision that we made. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of time, probably uh, spring of 2020. But we cannot wait. Okay. We are so excited for this and, um, and uh, are doing everything we can to make it happen as fast as possible. Well, that's great. Now, will that affect what you were saying about the, the double washing standard? Will that help cut down on that? Or do you exactly. think that will still happen so, because of the ugly plastic? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, we, you know, the, this washing line is to help um, improve the quality of the plastic and deal with that issue in particular because the product, um, the plastic is so, so dirty and it's so different than the other types of PET that we've been buying traditionally. So, so that's the plan. Um, and I, I, you know, it's important for HP that, you know, the quality of plastic that we use in our products has to be top notch. Um, it cannot be contaminated. So, um, so this washing line, you know, helps improve the quality, but then our cost model, of course, is also incredibly important. Uh, when we set up the project, we needed to make sure that our economic model could stand the test of time. We didn't want to come down there and say, okay, we're going to be sourcing and we're going to be buying this type of plastic and then, uh, you know, market conditions change and the price of oil drops and, and then we're tempted to go elsewhere to source the plastic. So, so by putting in this washing line, this also continues to help make our economic model more efficient uh, and keep our costs neutral in terms of, you know, thinking about this sourcing model versus others. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And then could you talk about the business benefits of your programs? It seems that your efforts aren't just good for the environment, but good for business as well. Yes. And that has to be um, clear in, you know, in everything that we're doing, we're seeing our customers change and their preferences and their desires for what features and benefits they want from the products that HP is, is selling them. And sustainability increasingly is important to them. Uh, as, as it should be and as it is to our own business leaders. Um, and so that's opening up kind of a pathway for us to make increasing investments and have increasing confidence in, in doing um, all of this work and taking all of these actions. Uh, number one, because it's clear um, the world is facing so many environmental crises and, and companies like HP need to take action and, and, and uh, start addressing these problems. Um, but from a business point of view, we're also um, thinking very clearly about how do we do this in a way that strengthens our business, that opens the doors for growth. Um, and our customers are helping us by continuing to voice their demand for more sustainable products. Uh, so together, we're able to make a difference. That's great. And then I also read in Fortune that um, HP in, in 2018 tracked more than $972 million in new revenue uh, back to sustainability programs, which they noted as a 35% year-over-year increase. I mean, that's, that's a huge case study for what you're doing. And that goes directly back to what I was saying about the changes we're seeing in our customers. Every year, we're seeing more customer interest um, and more requirements around sustainability uh, for our products, and that is simply fantastic. Um, so we are tracking that at the com commercial level. Uh, we're also seeing those changes with our, our consumer market. So we only expect that to continue to increase, and we'll continue to track it and use it as a as a powerful proof point for why we need to continue to invest in more sustainable solutions and um, share that information with the world so that other companies can see who might not be tracking this, that the market is changing, customers are changing. Everybody is feeling these uh, environmental pressures. Um, people are going on vacation and seeing more plastic in the ocean. People are um, uh, you know, dealing with, I'm, I'm sitting here in California today, and uh, many areas of the state are dealing with power outages because of the increased wildfires that are related to climate change. So this is, uh, this is a reality that we all have to face. And we cannot bury our heads in the sand. We must take action. It has to be right now. We can't wait. And products like the Dragonfly are examples of what is possible. And we all need to be doing more.
Agree. That's fantastic. And then, so what's next for HP sustainability initiatives? It sounds like you have more products on the horizon and even loftier goals. You are only going to see more from HP in this space. Uh, as I mentioned, we have our 30% goal for using recycled plastic in our products by 2025. And if you go to hp.com slash sustainable impact, you will see a whole host of sustainability goals, uh, really aggressive leading goals um, that we are committed to. And, uh, and our product roadmap could not be more exciting. Um, we've got lots of launches uh, coming up um, across our portfolio of products that aim to be the most sustainable in the world. And you're, you're going to continue to see us drive this. Um, we have a new CEO coming in. Couldn't be more excited about Enrique Lores, um, who's taking over the mantle. He's been in HP for 30 years and started as an intern. And, uh, you know, he, he has that HP DNA in him. And our founders, Bill and Dave, uh, committed to sustainability way back when they founded the company in the 50s. They listed what was called then as global citizenship as one of our eight corporate objectives, right next to revenue and profit. So they, they were visionaries, and this is inside our company. And Enrique um, definitely is committed to sustainability as well. Um, that's part of you know, his very first days um, coming into this role. He's, he's already been talking about it quite significantly. So you're only going to see more from HP. Wow. What pioneers in the 50s? That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. They were ahead I, of the times. Very, very much so. Very much so. So any plans to expand to other countries beyond Haiti since this model seems to be so effective? Well, right now we're excited about that washing line that I mentioned and, and putting that in and yep. scaling. Um, so, uh, you know, our plans for expansion are, one, to be more open source about what we've been doing there so other companies can leverage it and replicate it across the world, and that's already happening. Um, and potentially, uh, we will be looking for additional sources, most likely a source in Asia where we have a lot of manufacturing and uh, where the problem is, uh, is increasingly uh, needs to be dealt with. So uh, you'll, you'll likely see more from us, but right now we are focused on getting that washing line in as our next step in our ocean-bound plastic program. Sure. Okay. Well, that's a big enough initiative for sure. So how was the World Economic Forum? Did it give you hope for the future? Yeah, so I participated in uh, the World Economic Forum's event in New York as part of Climate Week and the United Nations General Assembly. And the convening there, you know, is incredibly powerful. Um, you're sitting among, you know, world leaders and um, other companies that are leading the way. And it was a great, powerful exchange of ideas and solutions um, and frank discussions of the problems. So um, uh, I think we all convened to continue to collaborate and uh, find solutions together. Uh, it's clear that that's the path forward, and we all need to be doing this, this work right now. Right. So what advice would you give to other companies or individuals interested in, in using ocean-bound plastics in their products? Well, I think the uh, innovation for this material is only just beginning. Um, it's important to think about um, your entire plastic strategy. So at HP, you know, it isn't just about using ocean-bound plastic in our products. It's about, number one, can we stop using plastic? Where can we eliminate the use of it, whether it's in our packaging or creating smaller parts and use less of it? How can we eliminate the use of, of plastic where possible? Uh, and then secondly, how can we use alternative materials? In a lot of our packaging, we're moving from plastic to molded pulp um, as, a second, as a second step. Then the third step is how do you move from virgin plastic or virgin materials to recycled content? Uh, and as I mentioned, we have that, that large goal where we're working on that. And then after that, um, the question is can you use uh, specific types of recycled plastic, like ocean-bound plastic in your products. Um, there are only certain types of plastic that are found in mass in the ocean. It's typically PET, um, uh, HDPE, LDPE, and polypropylene. So, so thinking about those types of plastic and where does it make sense to use them. Um, for us, you know, we started with our ink cartridges, and now we've moved to the ABS mix that you discussed. And you have to be also really thoughtful about how you use that plastic. When we're mixing PET with ABS, uh, you don't want to mix too much. Um, for example, in, in the Dragonfly and those speaker boxes, we're only using 5% PET um, in that formula. And that's on purpose. We, we would not increase it 
at this point in time because we need to ensure that that plastic can be recyclable at its end of life and we're not creating kind of a new type of plastic that's not recyclable. So thinking about your formulation is really important and thinking about end of life and creating circular opportunities so that you're not creating uh, more waste in the long term. That's great. And and for a lot of our listeners, they deal with the end of life product, right? So they're dealing with the tail end of this. So it's refreshing to see manufacturers thinking about that at the start of um, the manufacturing process, because that really is the only way that um, we're going to have significant change. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So HP has really changed the way companies look at material sourcing and, and you guys are a great example of the changes that can be made throughout the entire supply chain, you know, towards reusing and recycling um, the materials and the waste. Has this changed your corporate culture or have you really always been that way since you just mentioned the founders back in the 50s were really pioneers in this area? Yeah, and, you know, no, no matter what has been going on at HP, the employees have kind of carried this mantra through. You know, the HP way um, is stronger than ever now, and this is something that was established by uh, Bill Hewitt and Dave Packard, and um, it continues to grow. The momentum for this, the commitment to it, continues to grow among the employee base. When we launched our uh, Oceanbound Plastic Program, and we have a video out there called Rosette Story. It's just a short two-minute video that explains this process and, and how it works and the job creation and, and all of the things um, uh, in this short two minute video. And when we launched it, the phone started ringing off the hook from managing directors across the HP ecosystem saying, Hey, you know, in Turkey, we have, we have plastic um, on our beaches. Can we implement this program here or in this country, you know, we're, we have this situation. Can we become a part of it? Um, the momentum and the desire for sustainability at HP and embedding it further into our business and into our products is coming from across the employee base. Um, they couldn't be more revved up and charged up to, to make a difference, to create more sustainable products, to be proud to work for a company that's so committed to this. That's how I feel. I mean, every day I wake up, I can't believe I'm encouraged to do the work I am at the level I am at the speed I am. And I have the full backing of our entire leadership team and um, each of our product groups who have their own detailed plans and goals in this space. So I couldn't be more excited to be a part of this company at this point in time to drive this change with all of the employees at HP together. Oh, that's fantastic. And to know that that energy is there and um, it is keeping the momentum moving forward and I can hear the passion in your voice. So that's, that's awesome. But more great things ahead. It sounds like for sure. So how can Absolutely. listeners learn more about, about HP's, the new laptop and all of your sustainability efforts? Well, an easy way you just go to hp.com slash sustainable impact. And there you'll find um, all of our goals, all of our plans um, and our progress to date. We also have the HP Sustainable Impact Report that comes out once a year, um, typically around June, that has um, a reflection of the past year and all the progress that we've made. Um, so lots more to come. You can also follow HP Sustainable Impact on Twitter at HP Sustainable Impact. And um, uh, you can follow me as well on Twitter, too. Oh, that's great. I know we're following you, so it's worth the follow for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> So thanks, Ellen. We, we, I really appreciate your time today, and uh, we all really look forward to seeing what else HP does to rethink uh, supply change and, and the views on recycling and, and its overall impact on the planet. So thank you very much for the work you're doing and that, the excitement you bring to this challenge. Thanks, Liz. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,